Hello, this is Bill Hunt. Welcome to the IBM BPM tutorial demo series. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at the new BPM 7.5.1 Social Coach Toolbar in action using the Order Fulfillment Demo Scenario. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I'm logged on to the Process Designer as Bill Hunt. So when I start an instance of this process, or in other words, start a, a new order, create an order, it knows who I am and we'll keep track of that. So let's go ahead and create a new order or instance of the process by using the playback button to run this process. We can see create order is highlighted and when we claim that activity we can see the user interface that will coach us through participating in this this process, this activity of creating an order. We can see the coach toolbar towards the top of this screen. In the stream area we can see it's accumulating our activity and keeping track of the fact that I'm participating in this process. We can see our group of experts, or in other words the people that have previously created orders in case I need to reach out to this expert group. And we'll use the coach toolbar a little bit more as we progress through this process. So let's go ahead and create a new order for Target. We'll place an order for some new iPhone 4S's and a quantity of 325. We can see in this live report some information about the vendors, quotes in flight versus quotes completed to get an idea for a feeling for the load that we're placing on our vendors to help us make a better choice on which ones to choose to submit a request for quote. So we'll ask vendor 1 and vendor 2 to bid for this business and when we're done submitting we can see that the process has progressed to the get vendor responses activity in the process. So now let's switch to the process portal and continue using this process. Since we're using a shared model we can run this process from either the process designer or the end user environment of the process portal. So let's just continue on here as OF vendor 1. So we're logged on as OF vendor 1. We're going to take a look at this order for iPhone 4S's. We'll claim this activity and take a look at the stream that's accumulating for the people participating in this process. So we can see the system is taking care of keeping track of who's using the process. It sees OF vendor 1 is processing this activity. Vendor 1 can see the experts in their expert group, the other people that have completed this request for quote for bidding for the business. We can see that in the participants portion of the coach toolbar, we see an interactive process diagram that shows us Bill Hahn created this order. We can see that Vendor 1 is competing with Vendor 2 for this business, and the vendors can see their expert group. So vendor one will go ahead and respond and provide a quote for this business, $125,000 for that quantity of $325. We'll go ahead and log off and log on as vendor two. As vendor two, we'll go ahead and provide a similar quote, this time instead of $125,000, $150,000 to make it a, a bit interesting, a different quotes. So now analyst one will log on look for that iPhone order, be able to quickly find it with the quick search, drill down into it, take a look at where the order has been thus far. The order was created, two vendors bid on it. Uh, they're now um, going to review those requests for quote responses, those bids. We can see that Bill Hahn created the order. Vendor 1 and Vendor 2 reviewed it and bid on it, and a member of the analyst group OF Analyst 1 is going to go ahead and progress it. So OF Analyst 1 can see that the system's keeping track of the activity performed on the process, including their participation. This analyst can see the analyst expert group and the interactive process diagram and the participants pull down to the coach toolbar. We can see that Bill created the order that vendor 1 and vendor 2 uh, bid on the business. We can see a picture of OF Analyst 1 that's working on the order right now in this highlighted activity. And Analyst 1 can see their expert group. 
So now Analyst 1 will select one of the vendors, in this case the higher cost vendor, because Analyst 1 has had some negative experiences with Majestic, the Majestic vendor. And we'll see why that's important in a minute that we're dealing with a high cost vendor. So now let's log on as Beth, the manager. Beth is a part of the managers group. Beth can view her performance or her team's performance. The system automatically keeps track of the percentage of orders that are on track, at risk, and overdue. She can click on the at risk piece of the pie to quickly see the distribution of work across her team, as well as find that iPhone 4S order pretty quickly. She can see what's happened with the order so far and sees that it's awaiting her attention. So Beth will go ahead and claim that activity. She can see that the system is keeping track of the analyst's review and recommendation and the fact that she's working on the order right now. She can see in the interactive process diagram that she is indeed working on the process and can see her expert group, which she's actually going to use in a moment. Because she notices that the uh, currently recommended um, bid or vendor is the high cost vendor bid. So um, she's going to reach out to someone on her team. She sees that, that Ray has worked on one other similar task. Uh, and she also sees that, for instance, Bill has worked on five approvals in the past. So perhaps Bill is a good person to turn to to ask for help. So she'll click on the request for help and send a message to Bill requesting his assistance asking what documentation do I need to approve a high-cost vendor. Now Beth is going to click the star to follow this process instance, this order, to make it easier to uh, follow and deal with this order in the future. And We'll see how that comes in handy in a few minutes. So now let's log in as Bill Hahn and Bill is going to see in the help request section of his process portal any help requests awaiting his attention. So he sees this order for iPhone 4S. He can easily see that, that Beth has requested some help and he can see the message or comment from Beth about um, what she should do related to the high cost vendor order. So Bill's going to provide some experience and recommend that she reject the order and then request a high cost vendor exception form from the analyst team. So now when Beth logs back in at some future time, she can, of course, you know, use the out-of-the-box views, the scoreboard, dashboard views to find the order like she did before, but she could also use the My Followed Instances portion of the process portal. And when she clicks on that, it'll take, it, take her to any orders that she's following. And you can see there are a couple of completed orders as well as the active order in question. So she can very quickly drill down into the order that she needs to follow up on. She can see that Bill has responded to her request for help. She can read Bill's response and recommendation that she reject the order and request a high cost vendor exception form. So she can go ahead and work with this activity and post a comment to the team working on this process, this order and say, I'm going to reject this order. Please provide high cost vendor exception form so that I may approve it. Now let's see what the, uh, and she presses the reject button or reject the order. Let's see what the, the analyst team sees. Now analyst one has gone to launch, uh, but that's okay because uh, the entire analyst team can work on orders in flight. So let's go ahead and log on as analyst two. And analyst two can use the quick search to quickly find that iPhone order. Uh, analyst 2 will work with that order, uh, see what's going on amongst the team working on the order, can see that Beth has posted a comment uh, about why she's rejecting the order and what they need to do about it. So Analyst 2 is going to go ahead and indicate that he's attaching the high cost uh, vendor approval form, either providing a, a file or a link. That he'll browse for a file and attach a file. Uh, attaching the high cost vendor exception form. Now we can see once he submits that uh, what a manager would see. Now, any manager could work with this. But Beth will go ahead and check in on her uh, her to-do list of follow orders. Clicking on that order she's following she can see all the activities going on. She can see the comments that are being made. 
she can see that the analyst made a comment and indicated that uh, he was attaching a, a form uh, and you can see the form document that was attached. When she claims that activity and begins working on it, she can see that uh, there's actually a couple of analysts now working on it, Analyst 1 and Analyst 2. So the team is uh, teaming well. Uh, we can see the activity tracked in the stream, uh, the comment from Analyst 2, and that high-cost vendor exception form that was attached. So Beth can review that. Once it's reviewed, she can comment if she likes, indicating that she's reviewed the exception form and can now approve the order. We can see that multi-level comment or dialogue that's going on in the stream highlights that Beth's reviewed it and Beth can go ahead and approve it now that she has that uh, form documentation and compliance under control. So now you can see Beth has a full history of everybody that's worked on the order, all the comments, all the documents, uh, anything that happened is, is really audited. Uh, it's kept track of throughout the process and now Beth can continue on working with other orders in the system. For instance, she can take a look at some of these at-risk orders that the system uh, calculates over time based upon how long things sit in people's inboxes. IBM BPM will calculate the likelihood that orders will stand a chance of going overdue and flag them as at-risk. So Beth can change the priority in some of those or perhaps reassign them to other members of the team based upon a view of the workload across the team members. She can also um, take a look at the overall health of the process with trending information across days, weeks, or months, as well as a, a very quick uh, heads-up view uh, as a part of all of these out-of-the-box reports that work with any process that you run on IBM BPM uh, to see the highest volume and velocity activities, like, for instance, manager approval and selecting fulfillment option, the analyst activity, the vendor responses. And by clicking on any, any one of these portions of these uh, these dashboard scoreboards, we can drill down into those activities. Now, Beth, uh, a manager or an executive, can also create process-specific ad hoc reports. We can create these same reports at design time in anticipation of people needing reports, but end users can also, after the process is in production, create these reports in the fashion I'm, I'm showing you right now. So any process data is automatically tracked and available for business reporting, business analysis. So Beth can choose to take a look at uh, orders based on customer and quantity to get a feeling for uh, the orders based on um, customer. So we see here that Best Buy, Costco, Target, and Walmart represent pretty big pieces of the pie. And by choosing the multicolored bar chart, we can see that Target represents the largest quantity of orders flowing through our system. So it's very easy to build these ad hoc process specific reports and here are some more simple examples uh, that show vendor performance uh, the, this one shows our performance for each customer based on service level agreements and uh, how long we expect things to take uh, average response time by product here's the average wait time per um, primary task in the process we can see that manager approval is the biggest bar in this chart indicating the manager approval is taking a notable amount of time. So one thing we could do to drill down a bit deeper on this and, and diagnose, diagnose this a bit is to use the, the third perspective in the process designer, the optimizer perspective. And here we can tap into all of that performance data that's automatically collected for us. And we have some default scenarios that are time-based. We can also in a few seconds literally uh, create custom scenarios that will uh, slice and dice the data based upon things like uh, the size of order, the kind of customer, the name of the customer, any any kind of information scenario we'd like we can uh, get a view of. And, and the way that we get a view of this is with these heat maps. So for any slice of data, by default here I'm looking at all orders flowing through the system, we get heat maps. And one of the heat maps is this wait time heat map that shows us that manager approval is taking on average 13 hours and 35 minutes. Well, the analyst uh, recommendation activity is taking 6 hours and 33 minutes on average. If we take a look at the percentage of time, or the percentage of uh, orders, percentage of instances outside of range, in other words, the percentage of time that these orders are taking too long, 46% uh, of the time the analyst activity is taking too long, 
35% of the time, manager approval is uh, violating our service level agreement. In other words, the amount of time the business expects or hopes the manager approval will take. So we can see that we're missing our SLAs. We're taking too long to approve orders. Uh, we can use some other heat maps. Uh, one uh, popular heat map is a path analysis heat map. In here, we can see the percentage of time that orders are um, traversing different paths throughout the process. So, for instance, by clicking on this link, we can see all orders that are approved or rejected. By clicking on the approval link on the other side of the approved decision gateway, we can see all the approved orders and all the information flowing through the process for each order. Uh, the vendor, the price, the status, the, the, the destination customer. By clicking on the rejection link, we can see only the orders that were rejected. And we can share all this information with the extended team. So not only people that are using the process designer, but anybody on the team that has access to it, uh, viewing spreadsheets can work with this data and do detailed analysis. We can also ask the system, ask IBM BPM in the process designer here. In the optimizer view, we can ask it to spot some patterns for us by doing a guided optimization. So by doing a guided optimization, we can indicate the process data or process variable we're most interested in, in this case the status variable, which is where we store the approved or rejected decision and ask it to spot patterns for us when orders are approved or rejected. So we can see here when orders are approved under certain conditions and when orders are rejected under other conditions. So imagine if we could, um, as the system, as IBM BPM is providing business rule suggestions for us, identify when a manager is going to reject an order anyway, uh, a high percentage of the time. Why let it sit in the manager's inbox uh, and then pay that manager uh, a, a sizable salary to manually evaluate it if we know they're going to reject it anyway? It could save a lot of time and money. So by pressing the finish button here in a risk-free fashion, we can experiment with, we can see exactly what a process improvement might be. Uh, here it's, it's injected a, an auto bypass gateway that will pass it on to the manager when it needs high touch, uh, but it'll bypass the manager when it knows the manager is going to reject it or accept it anyway, reject or approve. And the way it decides that is by the business rule decision table that was automatically generated. So we can see here that in IBM BPM we're able to work with full-blown business rules using um, Webster Operational Decision Manager by tapping into that and dragging and dropping rules in from there. We can also write natural language statements using the business action language which will incorporate any and all process variables into uh, an automatic business vocabulary and we can also work with decision tables which is what was generated for us here automatically so for each row of the decision table we can see that the system has identified the combination of uh, variables that will result in insight into automatically approving or rejecting an order. So for each row in this table, it's the combination of conditions under which it's appropriate to automatically approve or reject an order. So with this tour, we've showcased the uh, BPM social capabilities of IBM BPM 7.5.1, and we've also, at the tail end of this demonstration, highlighted how we can go beyond that uh, and do some additional process analysis. Thank you for watching.